Welcome back, Quick Brain. The question for you today is how do you make great decisions quickly, with confidence, with clarity? And I'm very excited to have a dear, longtime friend on this show. We've been trying to make this work for quite a few years from Since the beginning. Since you started, I think. Exactly. Yeah. This is David Meltzer, and he is the founder of Sports One Marketing author, speaker. We're going to talk about his most recent book, which is Game Time Decision Making. And thanks for being on the show, buddy. Thank you. I was wondering if all those words started with a K or a C. Being exactly. a branding expert, I was thinking K. So I'm going to do this quickly, but thanks for having me on. No, th thank you. I know you and I often want to be able to record our conversations and um, because they're, they're priceless. Yeah. And I've learned so much from you as a friend and as a mentor. Um, as, as, as a peer and I think the quality of our life right now I think everyone would agree that our, their life right now is the sum total of the decisions they've made up to this point but are there any classes on how to make a good decision right school teaches you a lot of like what to learn math history science Spanish but they don't necessarily teach you how to learn and how to think and, and I see the problems. decision making like sleep yeah. You know, we make so many decisions in, in a day. Most people don't pay attention to sleep, but it's the number one habit that we all share, yeah. and we spend the most time doing it. The next would be decisions. There's so many decisions that you make every day, but people don't train us how to do them. We don't practice making decisions or understand how decisions are truly made quantifiably to, to make the best decisions. How do we assess the situation in a quick manner to make the best decisions? And what I have found as an executive coach in dealing with some of the biggest decision makers in our world sure. is that it's all value-based to start. That if you spend the time practicing knowing your values, that it allows you to literally, in my opinion, unconsciously make the best decision for yourself that is a balance between two different spheres. Uh, one, the pragmatic sphere of money. So yeah. I believe money is an object of energy that we put into the flow. And if you buy the right things, you'll be happy. If you buy the wrong things, you won't. But faith is always in conflict and with money. And when we make decisions strictly in a monetary analysis, we're not really utilizing our values. When we institute values into a quantitative monetary decision, it actually gives us a greater result because it really blends in faith. And one of the tricks to do that beyond knowing your values is to extract time from the decision making. Uh, and it's a, time is the nemesis to making decisions. Uh, and so if we can allow ourselves to do an analysis saying, what would my analysis or my decision be if there's no such thing as time? Everything changes. So that framework of utilizing our values, extracting time, can help you consistently make the best decisions because I think it blends both realms, the utopic realm of faith with the pragmatic realm of monetization. I like that a lot. I think a lot of people fail to make a decision um, and then they put it off and they put it off and they put it off and it takes a lot, a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. How do people begin finding, how would you define values? So values for me is to understand there's four types of values. Okay. One is our personal values, character, love, you know, integrity, different things that you may in your own person be. And then you have experiential values that starts from the time, I think, I believe in multiple lifetimes, but let's just say from the womb on, okay. you have these experiences and there's values that are created by what you've learned through the inaccurate senses you have and the inaccurate memory that you have. And then you have the giving values. Uh, and so the, how is this going to provide value to others is giving to me. Okay. And then receiving values, which has the most interference, I believe, between you and the connection that you have between inspiration and you is that most people are afraid to receive. They, they create interference through ego-based uh, programs. A lot of them are in our DNA. I call it the quantum memory that we've inherited from at least four generations, great-grandparents, grandparents, parents to us. Mm -hmm. But it allows us, we, we feel guilty for receiving. We don't feel worthy of what we have. We somehow think we shouldn't ask for what we want. But I create a flow with those four values. And for me, when I did my analysis, I have four firm things that make a decision for me. One is gratitude. Okay. So I find the light in everything that I'm assessing. I look for the positive, the best situation. I see things through it that other people will never notice. It raises my awareness when I'm looking to, I get to do this. What's the light, the love, the lesson in it? Mm. 
two is interesting was forgiveness. Really? Yeah, I think I, in order to make an appropriate decision, I have to forgive myself for the lessons I haven't learned. And forgiveness, self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness, because okay. I can't give what I don't have. And I think once I've forgiven myself for the lessons that I haven't learned, it allows me to drop out of the ego-based consciousness and into a truth consciousness. It connects me to an actual emotion that tells me this is a good decision, regardless of whether I put my hand in the fire before and I haven't learned that lesson. Uh, the next then would be accountability. Okay. Uh, a lot of people, when they make decisions, they're already going to blame, shame, and justification. They're already creating void shortages and obstacles in their decision-making process. They're always thinking, already thinking when they make the decision, what excuses could I have if this doesn't work out? It, before. Before. Wow. And I believe that happens consciously, subconsciously, and unconsciously. And then the last one of, of values is inspiration. And I think this is the most misunderstood thing. I shifted the paradigm of my understanding when I make decisions that I used to think when I did it in monetary sense, will this inspire me? You know, making this decision, will, right. will, will this motivate me or inspire me? What I learned was when I shift to, I'm always inspired. I'm connected to the greatest source of energy, power, and light at all times. In fact, I can prove it physically that my thumb has more kilowatts, you know, could light up all of Manhattan here, but I'm not utilizing all that power because I'm creating a corrosion and interference between that source and me. And so if I'm gonna make an inspired decision, I'm looking to see how can I lessen the interference between that which I'm connected to and me? How can I create less corrosion, which are all based off of conscious experiences that I have, about 10,000 new data points a day, thoughts, 40,000 of the same thoughts that exist in my subconscious that are really creating these neural pathways, which you know much more about. And then I believe that that creates a frequency to my unconscious competency. So are you making decisions consciously or, the, or are we talking about a combo? A combo uh, yeah, thing? consciously, subconsciously, and unconsciously. So consciously, I'm making a decision based upon harnessing what I understand mm -hmm. of my subconscious and understanding or having awareness of who I genetically and like literally uh, mathematically right. am, I believe I have a quantum memory. And so the more that I become aware of my quantum memory that my personality traits mm -hmm. are indicative of, my characteristics are indicative of it, those values that I talked about are indicative of, the obsessions and addictions that I have are indicative of a programming that now I, through my decision, I can activate through the epigenetic layer of my DNA that I believe I can activate different personality traits to expand or accelerate a better decision. So how are you defining, the, what's the difference between subconscious and unconscious then? So subconscious would be uh, the 40,000 of the same thoughts that I'm having, mostly when I'm sleeping or daydreaming, but my brain has actually utilized those to create neural pathways, to create efficiencies or discipline. Right. So some things we just know how to do, and those exist in my own experiential values, in my subconscious. The unconscious to me is more quantum. It, it, for me, it could be millions of lifetimes of information that is stored in a code, and that code can be accessed and changed and activated and deactivated. I, I probably know this much of what I'm talking about, just so you know, but I have a great sense, and these defined terms may be incorrect, but I have a great sense, and I coach this way. We were talking mm -hmm. about how I can carry 50 executive clients at a time and have a wait list. It's because I believe in coaching through that continuum. And the only proof that I have is that 100% of my clients, it works. Right. And it takes 10 minutes, literally a day, in order to effectuate practicing this. So what is that? Now, before I ask you about those 10 minutes yeah. look like, when you're talking about those values, and we're talking about things like gratitude, and accountability and does, are you recommending that the people are listening and watching have prioritized those values or are they individual Make, towards you? those are individual towards me okay. so you know everything we're all different yeah and that's what makes us great um, and so when we learn our values though people and, and I see people with completely diverse values of mine you, you know that can make very quick good decision 
because what makes a decision good or bad, right? That's a condition or judgment. Right. What makes it good or bad is is aligned with your values. So the better that you know your values, then you're going to determine in your head, and others will too, a yeah. portion of them, of the 4.2 billion people that have access to you, a portion will be like, good decision. Right. Every decision I make, I can find plenty of people that would tell me it's a bad decision. Why? Because my values are different than theirs. They're just decisions. Right. But if you're going to feel good about your decisions and get the results that you want, you have to know your values. And it would help also to know your your partner's values, your significant other, your team's values, because it would explain a lot of their decisions. It's such a good thing to say, because I do this with my business partners as well as my wife, and I've been happily married 23 years. She's only been happily married 12, the last 12, because um, I was not the guy that I am today. But what's interesting is I learned to go literally quarterly with my wife, and we spend uh, an hour apart writing down our values for the next quarter mm -hmm. and, and what we'd like to do according decisions we'd like to make. And then we get together, right? We don't talk to each other yeah. and we see which ones are the exact same and where our values are not aligned. And then we discuss compromise or submission or some other things that may be beneficial. And I really believe that as parents sharing those values, we don't have the normal circumstances. We have three teenage daughters. You can imagine the conflict that that causes between parents that values aren't the same. Right. And we, we send different messages that are not healthy to program our children to be happy and healthy as well. And so we really, and I do that with my business partners as well, the learning curve that you get from that short hour separate and then the short hour together is extraordinary because once again, now we're making decisions on the same page. And the only way to do that is the conditions and judgments of the values have to be the same because you could do it with confidence because you have clarity and it requires less energy. It requires less time. Like I know, like literally what happened was you texted me and said you're in town and you, to be able to get together finally to yeah. make this happen. And I was just like, text right back. I'm like, great, let's do it. And began I had to put no energy, no time into it. My, my values, when I think about my values, we can go through how you could elicit their own values. People are listening are things like love, growth, contribution, adventure. And for me, it was an easy decision, no time or energy required or minimal, because love, you know, friendship, relationship, growth, I know that that's, I'm gonna grow That's, here that's what we share so for much. this one. We're like, oh Very my God, so. 20 minutes of growth. Exactly, <laughs> and, then, and also the contribution that it's gonna have to the world who's listening to this. And also adventure, meaning a sense of joy and fun, because this is going to be a great nice experience. experience. And mine was the same way as I went down the list. And because you know how you go places and you forget these special people, because right. we travel a lot. And I've been really more cognitive of the fact of I'm making lists so that when I go to each city, that I'm literally prioritizing through my values mm -hmm. who I reach out to to figure out the limited time that I give and have yeah. uh, to to share these experiences that just accelerate and grow what we're trying to do. And to the, to the point we could feel fulfilled and happy is where, to the point where we're aligned with those kind of values because we, we demonstrate our values to other people based on where we put our, invest our time and attention. It's hard to, to, to tell somebody this is something valuable to me and you're not putting any effort or energy into it. Absolutely, and you see that through sports or art or music. If we all have the same value, we would all like the same things, right? Right. In, even in politics and in education, it's all value based. But I'm, you know, out here trying to make people happy, right? My main mission in life is to impact a thousand people like you that I know can impact another thousand to impact another thousand to be happy. That's over a billion people yeah, in a lifetime to be happy. But in order to do that, the real message is let's explore and practice our values. Mm. Let's really know. And I, I've seen the evolution of my marriage because that's the longest, most intimate relationship that, that I've had. And I love the fact that, you know, I can tell my wife, I'm not going to give that any energy or, you know, everything mm -hmm. will come at the right way at the perfect time. Where years ago, if I told somebody that, they were like, what are you talking about? You're going to rely completely, you know, our whole economic future on the fact right. that everything's going to happen at the right way at the perfect time or you're not going to give it energy. You know, imagine getting a tax on it and saying, I'm not giving it any energy without having your values aligned of right. what that means, your marriage is probably over. <laughs> right. That makes sense. Yeah. So the key then to make better, quicker decisions is to be clear on our values. How does somebody who's listening, sorry, 
and then we're in New York City to visit it. So the key then to make really good decisions quickly is to be clear about your values. How does somebody find out what their values are? Right, so we have to practice, mm -hmm. you know, and I believe in daily practice. Two minutes of meditation is worth more than two hours. A day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. So I, I've created a system, number one, to feel okay about lowering the bar. Okay. So if we're going to do and practice something every day, you have to be comfortable that I've lowered the bar, that I'm a bite-sized person, and because those bikes become chunks, become glaciers, if we do things in that progression and trust it. So what I do is allow people to give a minimum amount of time every day to do a value assessment of the decisions or the activity or actions that they've taken. And it could be as little as a minute a day. Um, to do that and I'll even start with an exercise if someone's not sure I start with gratitude because most people uh, I feel that's the most powerful Value you can have it's basically saying everything in your life is good Right <laughs> by being grateful. So if someone says where do I start and say 0.1 seconds a day Say thank you before you go to bed and thank you when you wake up and your life will start changing You'll start the action of creating a value-based decision-making mm -hmm. because you'll start just making decisions out of gratitude Instead of fear, right? And I want to say one thing about fear that I've learned through this process People think they're motivated by fear. You are not motivated by fear. It's the biggest soul-sucking energy-sucking thing out there What it does is focus you so if you can be aware that fear will focus me and focus allows you to get outcomes that you want mm -hmm. being focused because you're doing stuff every day when you're focused and that continuum goes from your conscious to subconscious to unconscious but it's going to suck your energy so I look to fear as just focus and I look for another by exploring gratitude and forgiveness or whatever my values are every day you can start with 0.1 seconds a day and start there but you're going to start building the habit yeah. and start thinking about your values and it'll be really interesting like every day it still kicks me in the face especially in new york i will walk by someone on the street and pass them up because i'm in a hurry time yeah and i want to help them but eat, once i give them money it, it leaves my hands. I, I don't care what the money is used for. Right. It will pull me back to them now because my values are so strong. But in the past, when I was practicing learning what my values were, I would start analyzing why do I feel guilty walking by that person? Why do I, I started asking questions? This is the practice of value and decision making and the combination of the two. So what would be the what would be one of those questions to help people to hone in on their on their values yeah so why do I feel this way is the main question why do I feel this why way? do I feel this way not why did I do it why do I feel this way about blank and so if you start practicing that question you're gonna really hone into what your values are and you're gonna start trusting those values faith and saying no I live by gratitude I live by accountability and I'm going to stop and hand a dollar to that person or a hundred dollars, doesn't matter. And even if I give a dollar and say to myself, why do I feel bad I should give them more? Then I got to ask myself, why do I feel bad about helping someone I don't know? Mm. And explore that. This is how we learn our values and you'll start learning about your own continuum of how you can be happy. Because if it's truly just happiness is a perception. And unfortunately, a lot of people have the wrong perceptions you know, suicide, anxiety, fear, these are overwhelmingly growing, not shrinking. You know, I look at college graduates. When I graduated college, 10% of graduates were anxious, fearful, or depressed, or, or suicidal. 10%. Today, 90%. Wow. This is a perception. Yeah, there's a, a lot of people have uh, that uncertainty. And so when you're asking these questions, questions could be also what's 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 most important to you good question so part part of this practice is do it now do it now. do it now this is a quick k w i k quick way to do it uh do it now number one it started with time when i realized you people these woo woo people that we hang out at the transformational leadership council talk about being present right it frustrated me because i really didn't understand what they meant i'm like i'm here but what it means to me is do things now meaning if you can do something now do it because you'll save at least half as much time. If you can't do it now, then put it into a repository, a list, a folder, whatever you want to do. And that allows me to prioritize by importance what to do next. Mm. When I'm evaluating what's important, I'm exploring my values, right? E-value, energy value, emotional value. That's evaluation for me. 
Now, here's the oh, interesting wow. thing. Time again, right? The framework, take time out of it. I don't do what's urgent. I do what's important first. And this is, I think, Roosevelt came up with years ago. You delegate, if something's just urgent, delegate somebody to do it. I prioritize by what's important. And the more that I know my values, the either it is to evaluate, it also makes it easier to do things now, yeah. which saves me more time and makes me more statistically successful at what I'm doing. And by doing those important things, you have less buildup of urgency. So some people are neglecting what's important and like their health or the relationship, and then all of a sudden it becomes urgent out of... Here's what it stemmed from my values. Really simply, I started creating time into what I was doing. I always put my family first, then my business, then my health. Mm -hmm. And through this analysis, my own practice, I completely turned it upside down. And my wife is the one that was catalytic to it. She said, we, we, you know, we lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I went bankrupt in 2008. And when I made it back, I said, honey, what can I do for you? I, I, you saved my life. I couldn't do this without you. Mm -hmm. What do you want? She said, I want you to take care of yourself. I get choked up. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, if you take care of yourself, I know you'll take care of others. And I was getting heavy, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't eating right. Business was going great. Yeah. Family was amazing. You know, everybody's happy and healthy except for Dave. So I said to myself, from today on, I'm going to spend a minimum of one hour a day on my health. Because I can't give what I don't have. And if I'm not here, all those other things are going to fail. And so I literally completely transformed myself through that value. The interesting one that I did that changed all my relationships, family. I give a minimum of 30 minutes a day to my wife, no matter where I am. Not all together. 30 minutes to my nine-year-old son. Two minutes to my teenage daughters, minimum a day. They wanted, I wanted five, they gave me two. And my mom, one minute. And here's mm -hmm. what's interesting about values. When I said I'm gonna spend one minute with my mom, I felt bad. And I said, why do I feel bad? And I said, what does my mom really want from me? I said, well, I'm a parent. There's four things that I want from my kids. One, I wanna know they love me. Two, I wanna know they appreciate me. Three, I want them to be happy. And four, healthy. So at a minimum of one minute a day, if I could share that with my mom, right, right, which I do every single day, text her, email her, and call her, one of those, and I just say, Mom, I just want to tell you thank you because I'm so happy, so healthy, yeah. and I appreciate you, and I love you, and it's changed my whole relationship for one minute a day. And those little moments, little by little, a little becomes a lot. Exactly. And you start understanding your values, what it really means when you say, I value my family. It also works the other way. I've been able to fire friends, right? I had a lot of people surrounding myself with the wrong energy, ideas, mm -hmm. and I, through understanding my own values, it propelled them away from me, or I just straight out said, this is about me, not you, but I, I'm not gonna be spending time with you anymore. I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate our friendship, but it's not good for me. And that's part of it, making a decision. You know, When you say yes to somebody, make sure you're not saying no to yourself. Like part of making good decisions is making boundaries around our time, our energy, our emotions. Yeah, saying no. I, I gave some money to a homeless guy today, and it was like five dollars. And, and he saw what I was holding. And goes, give me that twenty. And I literally said no, right? Because it's not within my values. Right. I'm like, you said you needed something to eat. There's plenty of places to eat for this, and I want to save enough to give to other people as well. Yeah. Like, and that's truly drives me. The, this book, Game Time Decision Making, which I utilize a pregame analysis to tell you what I'm going to teach you, the great lessons of decisions. Mm -hmm. Then I just use sports stories yeah. that, that show what these great leaders have been able to do because in sports you have to make very quick decisions and then do a postgame analysis. And so that was the idea behind Game Time Decision Making was to allow people in a friendly, easy way to start building these habits. At its core, though, is what I truly believe is that what we do every day is the most important yeah. thing. And lower the bar and just start doing it. And you build those decision-making muscles because a lot of people, they put things off and then that gets stronger, procrastinating or their energy and is going somewhere else, somewhere else. And you're one of the people that inspired me in the direction that I moved because what you do is exactly and did to, to even expound and expand upon what you've been able to teach people. It started with that type of thing. Right. You kind of started right there by being able just to read. And it's amazing that everybody who's watching this right now, you know, when they, if they have a big decision, where am I going to live? Who am I going to be with? What am I going to do? 
those little decisions, those big, big, they can become big decisions, especially if you do it over and over again, because then it gets deeper into your, your subconscious where it becomes yeah. more. And, and you said an interesting thing because of big decisions. What I find is that the bigger the decision, the more people don't vote for what they want. They, they start voting for what other people want. Interesting. And if you know your own values, you won't go searching for other people's values. And their opinions and their expectations that people... Advice have. is great. Mm -hmm. Counsel is great. But values, you know, my mom told me, which, you know, it's, nobody cares about me more than my mom. But when I graduated law school, I had a choice to be a real lawyer or to sell legal research online. And literally told me, you need to be a real lawyer because the internet's a fad. I'm so worried about you. And it was hard for me to go sure. against that. But voting for myself, now, back then I didn't have the practice of values, but I just had some inclination and trusted my faith that I was making. And then I hedged it by saying I could always, you know, I took the bar instead, I could always go back to the law. Yeah. So there's a reality of sure. a negotiation that occurred. That's the, uh, the blending of the monetization. That's a, that's a good example of me blending money decision with mm -hmm. faith. <laughs> very pragmatic with this faith and if it's funny here's one of the interesting things I've learned every time I make a decision on just faith it turns out better but I'm still too afraid I have to illuminate to everyone being someone who practices this all the time I love the fact when I'm like nope I'm just too afraid to make this on faith I'm gonna make it this is a money decision and it may be scarce it may not be aligned completely with the values that I have and even though I know in my heart that the faith-based decision, I still live in the man-made construct of time, and I won't allow time to be extracted. I want it now, mm -hmm. or you know, the college. There's all these little things that you think of that aren't faith-based, and that's the for me the fun part of the journey that allows me to enjoy the consistent, everyday, mm -hmm. persistent pursuit of my potential. But it's still just a pursuit, and I have learned to love my imperfections in that journey. Well, that's amazing. What would your challenge or advice be to everybody? Final words. Final words is really easy, but my challenge would be to say thank you for 30 straight days before you go to bed and when you wake up. And my advice is really simple. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. If there's any question of where to start, just ask yourself, what would a kind person do and what's the good deed to be done? I love that. I love that. And I, val I value your time and your, and your talent. It's amazing. How can people find out more besides? Yeah, my movie? name is the best way. So David Meltzer, I'm at David Meltzer, David Meltzer on YouTube and LinkedIn. My website is my first initial last name, okay. dmeltzer.com. Amazing. I recommend everybody takes a quick screenshot of this episode or of this video and uh, tag Dave, tag myself in it and share your big aha what was one thing you got out of this conversation that you uh that that touched you in a certain way uh, that you made me feel inspired to be able to share with other people because when you share it you get to learn it you get to learn it twice so uh tag us both in as always i'll repost some of my favorites and uh dave you're amazing thanks buddy thank you Hi, Quick Brain. It's your brain coach. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Three things to do. Number one, make sure you share this because when you teach something, you get to learn it twice. Update your learning so you can update other people's learning as well. Number two, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing because if you miss a video, you miss a lot. And finally, make sure you hit that bell so you're notified and you find out when we put out the latest and the greatest. One extra thing, if you want really close attention, then text me. Here is my phone number, 310-299-9362. Did you remember that number? 310-299-9362. Shoot me a text and we'll stay in touch. Ask me your burning question. And I wish your days be full of lots of life, lots of love, lots of laughter, and always lots of learning. I'll see you in our next video.